Hi everybody, I wanted to give you guys a supplemental lecture for this week um, talking about insulin. And insulin is something that you're going to do as pharmacy technicians a lot. Um, and whether you decide to go into retail or hospital, um, it's something you'll definitely have to deal with. And because week three is so bombarded with um, lots of really hard information to digest, I thought it would be very helpful to basically split this off into a mini lecture. So trying to basically take some of the pressure off of the live lecture and do this as a mini lecture. Now, insulin is part of one of your assignments this week, so please don't neglect to watch this um, or neglect to read it in your textbook either. Um, but I don't, and I don't want to make this seem like it's any less important by not having it as part of your graded lecture, but I do want to make sure that it is touched enough um, so that it doesn't get left behind either. Okay, so we're going to talk about um, insulin in this mini lecture. So there's all sorts of different types of available insulin, whether they be in generic or brand name. They come in three different types that um, basically a customer can inject into themselves. Uh, one of the, the newest or most popular types is quick pens. Um, most people enjoy quick pens a lot because they're easy to use. You don't have to pull it up into a syringe. Um, it's already um, done for you. All you have to do is um, adjust your dose by using this dose knob here. Um, and everything else is done for you. All you have to do is screw on a pen needle onto the end of your quick pen and it's basically ready to go. It's easy to carry in your pocket so one of these quick pens is usually good for anywhere from 28 days to I think the longest now is up to 56 days out of the fridge um, so they can carry them in their purse in their pocket um, and not have to worry about having to carry a syringe and a vial with them. So it's made portability a lot easier for patients. Um, obviously, they still make vials um, for patients, um, and the cost on them is a lot cheaper um, because there's less to manufacture. So there is still vials. You do have to use alcohol wipes and syringes and um, all that to be able to inject into those. Um, and the last one, which is a lot less popular are pen fills. We don't see this very often anymore. Um, the doctor does have to give the delivery device in order for the patient to be able to use one of these. Um, they come with so many cartridges per package um, and then the patient has to put that cartridge inside the delivery device that's given to them by the doctor uh, and you'll still have to figure out their dosage based on their um, prescription from the doctor. So one of the things that we do for patients is we calculate the amount of units that they'll have to use. Insulin is given in units and what a unit is is how much um, insulin it takes to be able to um, block glucose from being available to cells basically. So how much insulin it takes to be able to work in the body. Um, insulin of syringes are available in standard sizes. However, the markings on them may not always be in units. So um, it is necessary to know what um, the calculation is between units and um, mLs or milliliters. So on the left hand side here you see what the conversion is. So the, the standard is that 100 units is equal to 1 mL. Um, so that then leads us to the fact that 50 units is 0.5 mLs or 30 units is 0.3. On the right hand side here is a question from your textbook basically asking you if a patient were to receive an insulin dose of 45 units and they had one of these types of syringes, um, how many mLs would they draw up? So there, if it was 45 units, how many mLs would they draw up? Well, if if you wanted to actually do the calculation out, you would write um, 1 ml over 100 units is equal to x ml over 
45 units. And then you would solve for X to find your MLs. Or you could just say that it would be 0 0.45 ML. Got to get to my next screen here. Here's a look at some common insulin labeling. Um, there are a multitude of different brand name and types of insulins out on the market. The most common insulin concentration is your U100, which means that there are 100 units of insulin per each ml. There are newer formulations that have come out onto the market, which include 200 units per ml, 300 unit per ml, and there's the always popular and very confusing U500, which is a very concentrated, high-dose insulin. Um, this has been a contender in the past for causing a lot of patient harm and death because patients have not, um, well, I should say prescribers and pharmacists have made errors and calculations with this one. Uh, so it has gotten very special labeling on it, as you can see, warning, high potency, not for ordinary use. Um, even this has lately come out into a quick pen, which not many of us were super duper thrilled about because we were worried that it would get confused with the other quick pens, but they were very careful in their labeling when it came out, which was good. Um, but you have to be careful and look for these newer high dose insulins that are the two and the 300 and of course the ever popular 500 to make sure that you're calculating the right dosage when you're giving these concentrations. Because as it says here, insulin is not interchangeable. You always have to make sure that you're giving the right dose to the right patient for the right reasons. They all have different onsets they all have different durations of actions. Some of them are long acting, so they may last 24 hours, like Levamir, Lantus, um, Apidra, those are 24 hour insulins, or they might be super short acting, like um, Humulin R up here is a short acting insulin, it's usually given for mealtimes. Or they might be like these mixes, the Humalog 50-50 um, or 75-25, these are intermediate acting insulins, they last quite a bit longer. Um, any of these, if you are given to the wrong patient, may lead to patient harm. Um, it's very easy to make a mistake that leads to um, patient issues with insulin. So the most um, beneficial thing anyone in the pharmacy field can do is always triple check their work on anything that's related to insulin. Now we're going to look at a few calculations of insulin problems and each of these I tried to pull have a label with them so we can actually look at what the labels look like when you're pulling a product. Um, if you are ever unsure and you are in a pharmacy setting I always find it helpful to go pull the actual product off the shelf so that you can look at the label so that you know exactly how many mls or how many units per ml are in that product so that you can help do your calculations. In this first problem it says a patient is using 18 units of insulin each morning and 10 units of insulin at 7 p.m. How long will the volume shown in the label last? So in this particular label it says there is 10 mls in the bottle and 100 units per each ml. So we need to figure out how many units overall this bottle has in order to calculate this problem. So if there's 10 mls and there's 100 units in each 1 ml, we need to know how many X units there are, right? So by multiplying this out, our mLs will cancel and we'll get our units as a final answer. So 10 times 100 is going to give us 1,000. So it would be 1 
thousand units in this bottle. This patient is taking 18 units in the morning plus 10 units in the evening at 7 p.m. So they're taking a to total of 28 units per day. They're given a bot this one vial of insulin, which is 1,000 units. So 1,000 units divided by 28 units per day is going to be equal to 35.7 or 36 days. That's how you find out how long it will last. The next one is very similar, except for this time we're using a MEX vial. However, it still has the same volume. So it would be the same calculation. 10 mLs, there's 100 units in each 1 mL. So we're going to get the same units again. There's 1,000 units in this one bottle. The first question asks us, how many total units does the patient use per day? So this patient uses 20 units every morning and 18 units every evening. So 20 units plus 18 units is going to equal a total of 38 units per day. The next question asks us, how many vials does a patient need for 30 days? So we'll take these two numbers and we'll divide them again, just like we did in the, same, in the last question. So 1,000 units divided by 38 units is going to be equal to 26 days. So one vial will last 26 days. So the patient is going to need at least two vials to make it through the whole month. And since we can't break vials, uh, we're going to have to give two vials to make it through that whole month. So the patient will need two vials. Now, if that were quick pens, it'd be a little bit easier. They probably could uh, get less that way. And these two vials, 26 plus 26, will last 52 days. Our last question we'll do with, is with dealing with a pen, um, so a little bit different of a volume-wise calculation. So this time, let's look at the labeling to find out how many units we have here. So this time we have 3 mLs, and 3 mLs is the volume of most pens. So 3 mLs, but there's still 100 units in each one of these per 1 mL. So our mLs will cancel. So this is 300 units total in one pen. All right, which is exactly what it just asked us in that first line. If a patient uses 23 units daily, how many days will this quick pen last? So they're using 23 units, so 300 units divided by 23 units is going to be equal to 13 days. I hope each and every one of you found this little recording helpful. Uh, if you have any questions about how you calculate day supply or volume out of an insulin, please let me know.